I think is a win for the radiant ones. I just, I didn't, I think I can do it. So this is worksheet four, but I think it's also worksheet five and the test. You have a face scan. I do. I never guess I've never recorded it here. Um, so this is worksheet four, number 10. Complete the unit circle angle measures in degrees. Okay, so do I have to memorize all these? I say no because I know it starts at zero and one full trip around is 360. And from there, I can just about figure everything else out because halfway around is 180 and half of that 90. Halfway between 180 and 360, 270. How about the halfway markers? How 45. And then here's where you might want a calculator just to check, but 90 plus 45 more, 135. 45 more is 180, so I'm on the right track. 45 more, 45 more, 45 more, 45 more, 45 more. made it. So you got to know where you start and where you finish. And you need to know this, that one. Right, if you divide it in thirds, you get 30. And then we'll count by 30s. Ian, you should be filling yours out right now. Whoops, what did I miss here? Something went wrong. 180, 180. How about 180, 210? 240, 270, 300, 330, 360. There we go. 180, 180. So, did I have to memorize? I mean, I guess maybe I had to memorize a little bit. I had to know that all the way around is 360. And I had to know this first one was 30. But the rest... <coughs> so let's do the radians one. <coughs> Where do I start on radians? What's all the way around in radians? And then halfway around? Half of a half? Well, I, I guess I said that funny, but pi over 2. And then the bottom is 3 pi over 2. Half of a half is a fourth. And then I can count by pi over 4s. Pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4. 4 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, 6 over 4, 7 over 4, 8 over 4. And then again, this one angle I need to know, that's over 6. That's pi over 6. So this one's 2 pi over 6, which is pi over 3. 3 over 6, 4 over 6, 5 over 6, 6 over 6, 7 over 6. It's hard to say 8 over 6 and write 4 pi over 3 at the same time. 9 over 6, 10 over 6, 11 over 6, 12 over 6. And then maybe, you don't have to highlight on the test, but it's a good reminder that all the shallow angles are over 6. All the steep angles are over 3. Again, you don't have to highlight them. You may just look at them and sort of remind yourself that, yeah, I think I did this right. Because all my sort of uh, matching up angles are matching up how they're supposed to match up. And all the over 4s are in the middle. Again, you don't have to highlight the test. But if you want to, because it helps you see, you know, the corresponding stuff and the shallows and the over sixes, knock yourself out if that helps. So, yes, some people are worried about that, but I contend, and now Molly agrees, that that is not uh, a memorized problem. That is a kind of figure it out problem. A little bit of memorizing, because you gotta, you got to know something to start with, but then you're good after that. All right, the main point of today, or the only point of today, is to answer questions from worksheets four and five, or one, two, and three, whatever questions you have. But I I would love four and five, because that's the most recent stuff. Yes, ma'am? Uh, number two on five, 
number two on worksheet five. Just Preferably just the second one. Okay. Okay, so yeah, and these are the annoying ones because you end up scratching out and writing over and it's a pain, but C equals 3, A equals the square root of 2, secant of A. Okay, secant goes with cosine. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, which means secant is hypotenuse over adjacent. I have the hypotenuse, that's 3. Adjacent, I don't even have the adjacent labeled, so I guess I better figure out which side is the adjacent. So how do I know which side is the adjacent side? If I'm, That's kind of a dumb question or a trick question even, because I have to know which angle we're talking about. Mm -hmm. if we're talking about angle A, which side is the adjacent side? B. And that, that's especially weird for this problem, or tricky maybe, because statement 1 and 3 have to do with angle B, and so that switches who's opposite and who's adjacent. So be super careful. And we're working the first one, so I think we're okay. Uh, I need adjacent. Uh, I'll have to do a squared plus b squared equals c squared. 9 minus 2 is 7. So my missing side, my adjacent side, is the square root of 7. And then I have to fix it. So 3 root 7 over 7. So that one is true. Okay. And then again, 1 and 3 are annoying because you have to ignore, erase, or mark out all the work you just did and then rework the problem. And if that bugs you and you want a scratch piece of paper to just redraw ABC, that triangle, and start over, that's okay. Probably the safer, definitely the safer way to go. Molly, or wait, who's <laughs> up there? Who's Jack? What you want? Uh, I, well, I just had a question. So it's on the, actually the first worksheet. On the first worksheet, okay. Yeah, it does go in the very end. So on number one, yes. You get fifteen. Yeah. Yep, fifteen is the missing side. How do you? Because I understand c squared plus a, a squared plus b squared plus c squared. Is that what you use there? Well. If you know that that's one of the Pythagorean triples, you don't have to use it. But assuming most people don't know 8, 15, 17, you'd have to do 8 squared plus b squared equals 17 squared. And you would have a calculator, so this would be a great spot to use the calculator. 17 squared minus 8 squared is 225, and the square root of that is 15. Okay. And then the second thing you'd need to do is make sure you know who's opposite and who's adjacent. And then you're off and running. Keep going, or are you good from there? Okay. Kate, what was your question? Um, can you go to like number two on the number worksheet four? I just want to make sure that like I have the negative thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's like B, uh, not B, sorry. Can you just do C? C. So did you try to go directly there, or did you try to do a coterminal angle? I just wanted to go backwards. Mm-hmm. Like, you just go that way, right? Yeah, so that means you go backwards, and you got to go backwards 60. So then it's just like... So it doesn't mean backwards all the way around to positive 60. It just right. means backwards so, so 60, so about right there. Okay, cool. So I did know how to do it. Mm -hmm. right, thank you. If you don't like going backwards, you can always add 360 get a positive angle, and you kind of got to go the long way around now, but 300 would land you at the same spot, same landing, co-terminal. So if you don't like negative angles, you can always avoid them by doing the co-terminal thing. Okay, what else? Can you do number seven? Okay. Oh, that's a great follow-up to the one we were just looking at. Because I have no idea where negative 19 pi over 6 is. So 
how can we find another angle that lands in the same spot? Let's add 2 pi. Uh, I guess if we were thinking ahead, we could have just added 12 pi over 6 from the get-go. So that gets me negative 7 pi over 6. There's probably some people who can picture where negative 7 pi over 6 is. A little more than <coughs> a little more than halfway around going backwards. But if you don't want to mess with that, then you can add 2 pi again and get 5 pi over 6. And so all of these are coterminal. Let's see, 5 pi over 6. That's a little less than pi. Someone earlier today suggested and even said that the first thing they're going to do when they get their test is answer these two questions. So that way they have it to refer to, plus it's a kind of an easy way to ease into the test and probably get them right and get some familiarity with quadrants. And also when you hit one like number three on number seven, you can be like, okay, I know where five pi over six is. That's in quadrant two, which is what we're looking for. Quick comment, that going backwards thing, backwards negative 7 pi over 6, so backwards a little more than halfway around would put you in the same spot. So again, as we get more familiar with this, more of you are going to are gonna start being okay with negatives that are reasonable, like negative 19 over 6, that's not reasonable. But negative 7 over 6, maybe you can figure that out. But you never have to. You can always just add 2 pi and get a positive. Jack? Uh, so for the actual one, it's 6. When it's pi over 180, right? Pi over 180. Correct. Pi over 180 is the, is the conversion factor. Um, well, or 180 over pi, depending on which way you're going. But if we're starting with degrees, then we need degrees in the bottom to be replaced with radians. So that would be pi over 180. And that would be another spot where you could use your calculator. Because, well, I would ignore the pi, but 225 divided by 180. And then do you remember the magic that the calculator can do with that? Math. And your first action, first button is fraction. Your first option is fraction. Five fourths. Not a lot. I was doing that last night. I was, I was just like, yeah. But you got a calculator. Yeah, I'm not still done. Jack, keep going. You want me to do another one of those, or you're good? Okay. Okay. We've done quadrants. We've done angles. We've done coterminal. That's all the reasons. Yes. Six on worksheet five. Ah, uh, yes. A word problem. <coughs> What's up? Okay. It, it's frustrating, not quite amusing, that most of the errors on, on this problem come not from algebra or even pre-cal, but from labeling things correctly. A 15-foot ladder is positioned against a vertical wall. So what's 15 feet long? The ladder. The ladder. So where do I put 15 feet on the picture? On the slanted one. On the ladder, on the hypotenuse, whatever you want to call it, that's where the 15 goes. 15-foot ladder against a vertical wall forms an angle of 70 degrees with the flat ground. So 70 degrees with the flat ground. So should I put 70 degrees... I don't know how to ask this without being snarky. Should I put it with the wall or should I put it with the flat ground? With the flat ground. <laughs> I don't know. That's a when I phrase it like that, it's really easy. And yet. <laughs> oh, my seven looks like the right marker? Yes. I think if I'll take yeah, the time to mark this one, then we're definitely okay. 
So I marked it as 90 and then I labeled it 0 degrees. How far is the base of the ladder from the wall? So this is the last thing we need to label correctly. How far is the base of the ladder from the wall? Is that an x distance or is that a y distance? X. That's the x distance. Okay, I hope you thought that that was like overkill on labeling stuff. Yes. But that is where most of the errors come in. Putting 15 or x or 70 in the wrong spot. Um, which trick function would you like to use based on the information we have? Uh, cosine. I think cosine would be a great choice. Because we have adjacent, or no, we have hypotenuse and we're looking for adjacent. So cosine of what? 15, 70, or x? 70. 70. Always cosine of the angle. Adjacent over hypotenuse. x over 15. So 15 cosine 70. And I kind of just did that uh, blindly. I didn't check something to make sure. What should I be careful about? The right mode. So I should be because I've been doing this problem all day, but make sure. Um, one. So right, it's a true statement, which makes it not our answer. Secant 25, who's secant partners with? Cosine, so 1 over cosine 25. 1.103, so I don't know what happened there. But that's the, that's not true, so it is our answer. The right, wrong answer. Now, our last question is, wait a minute, when do we do that inverse thing? Look at number five. If the tangent is three fifths, tangent is three fifths. Mm -hmm. So the answer is three fifths. How do I get? How do I get the angle? How do I get backwards? Arlette, what do we do? Inverse. So inverse. Oops. Inverse tangent. Okay, wait, three what's, the, what's the difference between the tangent and the Reciprocal? Is that what you're... That's a great explanation. That's exactly um, right. So Inverse tangent is getting the angle whose tangent is. I kind of always thought they were the same thing. Cotangent is <laughs> tangent upside down. Cotangent <coughs> and tangent are both ratios. But they're flipped ratios. Inverse tangent means go backwards and find the angle. Mm -hmm. So statement C means go backwards and find a sign. So inverse sign of 31 over 43. It's 46, so that's not right. Then we sort of have both issues with one problem in part B. I want to do an inverse because I don't know the angle, but I don't have a cotangent button. <coughs> so I can flip that, but I want to flip the ratio, so inverse tangent of 4 over root 3. Whatever that is, inverse tangent 4 divided by square root 3. That one's right, and we are looking for the correct one, so the answer is B. Uh, do you finish doing Yeah. Anything else on four and five? I mean, they're not hard, but you just got to know what buttons to push. Back to number two. So we, we know that statement two is true. Uh, now let's go to statement one, but now we have to throw out all the work that we already did. Statement one, if A is 12 and B is 3 root 2, then cotangent of B, 
cotangent of B. Cotangent is the flip of tangent, so it's adjacent over opposite. So adjacent to B, adjacent to B is the 12. Yeah, side A, which is 12. Opposite B is side B, which is 3 root 2. So that was kind of nice. I never had to find the hypotenuse for that question. So 12 divided by 3 is 4. That square root of 2, though, is still on the bottom. So it's not 4 square root 2. It's 4 over square root 2. So when I fix it, I end up with 2 square root 2. So statement 1 is not correct. Statement 3, if B is the square root of 5 and C is 4, I feel like I should go different colors or something here so I can see what I'm looking at. B is the square root of 5, C is 4, cosecant of B. Uh, let's see, cosecant goes with sine, so H over O. H is 4. O is square root of 5 because I want the opposite of B. This is weird because I got everything circled here, but I want the opposite of B, which is side B, which is square root of 5, which is 4 root 5 over 5. So 1 and 3 are correct. Uh-oh. No, 2 and 3 are correct. Next page. Seven's another ladder problem. Two is conversions, or excuse me, eight is conversions. Nine and ten are coterminals, which we kind of talked about. Eleven through fourteen is arc length and sector area. So do we need to do one of those? Yes. Or two of those? Um, let's do number twelve. Because <coughs> number twelve has a great wrong answer. The length of an arc, so that's theta times r. The length is 14. The radius is 8. Find theta. Like, all right, that sets up pretty nicely. 14 divided by 8 is 1.75. But why why not A? A says 1.75. Yeah, when you do this formula, you always get radians. So that's 1.75 radians, not 1.75 degrees. Also, if you try to draw a picture of it, radius is 8. I want the arc length to be 14, so I don't know if that's about 8. Maybe that's 14. I don't know. It's hard to draw that accurately. But I'm pretty sure it's not 1.75. Dog's walking by the room. What's going on? Nobody wants to see that. The drug dogs. Does that make you worried? No. Okay. Just to check it. <laughs> okay, so it's 1.75 radians, which means we need to do the conversion radians to degrees. Could, would you really put 1.75? Like, that's such a small angle. So when I do the conversion, I get 100.268 degrees. Which, hey, that my picture was pretty accurate then. It's also true that I knew the answer first, so that helps. The answer? What? Did you hear it bark? Uh, those weren't the drug dogs. I think those were Miss Houston's dogs. Yeah. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
<laughs> so, pi r squared, that's the, that's the full area of the pizza. But you're not going to eat the full pizza. You're eating whatever fraction this is. So 36 pi times, I'm going to rewrite this as 2 pi over 3 times 1 over 2 pi. So the two pies cancel. And, uh, okay, so you're eating one third of the pizza. Now, if you know where two pi over three is, it's like, all right, that, that looks like about a third of the pizza. So that kind of makes sense. So I just want a third of 36 pi. So the area of the pizza you're eating is 12 pi. Which is 37 point something. So again, I wouldn't worry about the details of the formula. Instead, think of it as the whole pizza times whatever fraction of the pizza you're eating. So the angle you're eating out of the to total angle. Number 14. Find the radius. Find the radius. So now we're looking for the radius of a sector with area 18 pi. So this is a backwards problem. So 18 pi is how much you're eating. We don't know the radius, but we do know that you're eating 7 pi over 9 out of 2 pi. Well, that's a lot of pieces in there, but... Let's see. Uh, I could divide the pies out. I can divide both sides of pies out if I wanted to. So 18 equals r squared. And the fraction that you're eating is 7 pi over 9 times 1 over 2 pi. So only the pies cancel. You're eating 7 eighteenths of the pizza. pretty good chunk of the pizza. If you wanted to draw a picture of 7 pi over 9, again, it doesn't have to be perfect, but that's almost a pi. So yeah, that makes sense. 7 out of 18 is almost half. Your picture sort of matches with that. So I feel good about eating, I don't know that I feel good about eating 7 eighteenths of a pizza, but almost half a pizza? Yeah, you could eat almost half a pizza and be okay. 18 times 18 <laughs> divided by 7, and then don't forget the square root. All right, arc link sector area. Okay. Um, are you okay getting to here or no? Yes. Okay. So I would multiply both sides by 18 to get rid of that 18. Oh, okay. So 18 times 18 equals 7 r squared. Then I'd divide by 7. And then I'd square root. Okay. Yeah, I did get a little rush there at the end. Seventeen, I don't think is too bad. Like that's x comma y, but it's also a comma o, which means the radius is five or the hypotenuse is five. And then you're ready to answer the questions without even graphing anything. Eighteen is the same type of question. I think we looked at quadrants already. Reference angles. Reference angle. What's the reference angle? I would say it's the smallest angle to the x-axis. Get to the x-axis as quick as possible. And I can tell by looking pretty quickly which one of those is wrong. Do you know how? Let's 
Galaxy, wherever you are on the unit circle, like what's the farthest you could be away from the x-axis? Uh, 90. You couldn't be more than 90. Yeah. So it's definitely not 123. <laughs> so that one's false just because 123 can't work. But generally speaking, you graph it and figure out where is the closest <laughs> x-axis. Do we need to do one of those? Do you want to do one of them in radians? Let's jump to the radians. The reference angle is 7 pi over 9. 7 pi over 9. That's not quite the pi. Somewhere over there. How far away from pi are we? It's like, how far is this? We're at 7 pi over 9. We need to get to pi. So you're, you're 2 pi over 9 away. Seventeen pi over six, I don't like that angle, that's too big. So let's subtract two pi. And by now I'm jumping to the common denominator form of two pi. So that would be five pi over six. So oh wait. Trick answer. I that 17 pi over 6 is coterminal with 5 pi over 6. That's not the question. 5 pi over 6 is over here. How far away from pi are we? Yeah, we're 1 pi over 6 away. So trick answer, because those two are coterminal, but that's not the same as a reference angle. 13 pi over 8. 13 over 8. 13 over 8. It's bigger than 1, so I know I'm going past pi. How about 13 over 8 relative to 3 pi over 2? Would you rather have 13 eighths million dollars or 3 halves million dollars? You'd rather have 13 eighths because it's bigger. It's, it's more than 1 and a half. 12 eighths would be one and a half. So I got to go past one and a half. So that was 13 over 8. Now my nearest x axis is over here at 2 pi. So how many over eighths away am I from 2 pi? Three eighths away, because 3 would get me to 16. So this is, that's right. I'm three eighths away from all the way around. So the best way is to draw the picture and figure it out. Like, again, there's equations, but you have to have a different equation for each quadrant. So we don't want to mess with that. Um, about the only thing we haven't done <coughs> is the puzzle problem things, like 22 and 23. So let's do one of those, maybe both of those, or at least start 23. So 22, tangents 2 thirds, sine is less than 0. OK, I'm not concerned about the 2 thirds yet. I'm more concerned about where this thing goes. All students take calculus. So if tangent is positive, tangent is positive in 1 and 3. And again, some people are going to write down 1 and 3. Other people are, are going to do it a little more visually. Sine is less than 0. So sine is negative. Sine goes with the y, so sine is negative on the, the down stuff. So that would be 3 and 4. 3 and 4. So whether by picture or by list, I'm in quadrant 3. Tangent, 
two thirds. The tangent is opposite over adjacent. Opposite is the y coordinate, adjacent is the x coordinate. So, my picture's not right. What's wrong with my picture? I got negative three. Negative three? Why is three negative? Because you went to the left. Is my picture good now? Why is two negative? It's going down. Okay, I made both of those negative. Oh, do we still have a positive tangent? Yeah, because the negative over negative canceled out. And so this was a little bit tricky over here. Tangent is still positive, but it's not positive because everybody was positive. It's positive because they were both negative. Missing side, a squared plus b squared, 4 plus 9, 13. How about the hypotenuse? Is he negative? No. Why not? Because he's never negative, so we're good there. Um, so are we are we good with that problem now? I mean, we haven't answered it, but we've got everybody figured out and opposite adjacent hypotenuse. Let's set up 23, and then we'll we'll be done. Cosine is negative one half. Theta is between pi and three pi over two. Okay, that's a little bit different information, but I think that's even more helpful information because that tells me what quadrant I'm in, right? If I think about the quadrant markers, pi and three pi over two, that would be in quadrant three. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Uh, where did the negative come from? The one or the two? The one, because it's backwards. And because two is never negative. Uh, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So square root of three? Yes or no? Why no? It's got to be negative. So drawing these triangles, you've got to always be on your toes looking for, if you go left, you're negative. If you go down, you're negative. And the only way you know that is based on the picture. So be careful. All right. I feel like we've hit a little bit of everything.